Morning, everyone. Welcome to another Next Stand interview. Today, I'm going to be speaking to Mike Holt. Sorry, we're a little bit late. It's it's called technical gremlins, which happens when you're remote working. Can happen. It That's can't right. it, Mike? It can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where whereabouts having, in the world are you? Audio I'm in Chiang Mai, Thailand. It's in the northern the northern province in Thailand. That sounds wonderful. Tell me a little bit about Thailand because I've never been there. Or for anyone that's watching that's never been to Thailand, what 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 it's, what can people expect when they arrive in Thailand? Well, I mean, so it's a beautiful country. I've traveled around to many places here over the past year and a half. I spent some time living on the islands, both Phuket and Koh Samui. And uh, now I decided to come to Chiang Mai because there's a lot of travel restrictions right now. Bangkok is under a total lockdown. Mm. And because of the pandemic, which is still sorting itself out. Um, but yeah, I mean, what, when you when you arrive, you either come into Bangkok or most likely Phuket. And uh, so you can, you have a little there's a little bit of something for everyone here, I would say. You've got beaches, yeah. cities, mountains, rainforests. Just depends on what you're looking for. And then prior to prior to the pandemic, did you were we seeing quite a big increase in in people re remote working to to Thailand? Oh yeah, definitely. Actually, where I am right now in Chiang Mai is, you know, before before the pandemic, it was considered one of the top digital nomad hotspots in the world, according to Nomad List and and many other places. But now, it's it's pretty quiet and empty around here. But where I am right now, actually, at the yellow co-working space is pretty busy. There's a lot of people. Oh, that's great. Tell, tell me a bit about yellow. Tell, tell me, is this one of your main halts? Uh, yeah. So this is, there's quite a, many different co-working spaces here in Chiang Mai, but this one's still open and pretty busy. So basically it, they provide fast Wi-Fi access. You can get a membership here for about, you know, roughly a hundred dollars a month. So it's pretty affordable. And they also have delicious coffee. Uh, so people usually just it's open 24 hours a day so which is nice you can come work wow time you want mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you get people sleeping in there then <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised <laughs> oh, that's, that's lovely that, that's I usually really lovely just work for work from my airbnb we're renting airbnbs here yeah and, uh, yeah so but what, yeah, got, what got you into remote working in the first place oh i've been doing it for probably five years now I've um, been traveling a lot I've, I've traveled all through South America most almost every country in South America um, been to Canada a few times mm. and and then about let's see November of 2019 I flew to Bali Indonesia because I'd always wanted to visit there it's very again very popular spot for digital nomads so I flew I just bought a one-way ticket to Bali and I didn't know when I was going to be back. And then, of course, uh, after about two months, I flew to Thailand. And then this pandemic happened, and I just decided to stay here. Yeah. Is it? I mean, a lot of people listening, thinking about remote working, possibly a little bit put off at the moment because of the pandemic, et cetera. But, it's understandable. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but even then... I. Uh, uh, there aren't ways to do it even now yeah yeah there's actually a lot of countries are jumping on the bandwagon and they're adopting this this digital nomad or remote work visa so i think just a few that come to mind uh one is estonia in europe mm. uh and let's see portugal costa rica i believe is is they're offering digital nomad visa so essentially what that allows yeah, you i think to do croatia is, are, aren't they That's yeah croatia yeah. too lots of mm. countries are jumping on board because they're seeing like even here in thailand for example there's a huge a big dip in tourism so they want to incentivize digital nomads to come and set up shop and stay for six months to a year so that's kind of that's the the goal behind this and what sort of people are are doing it what sort of people what sort of people are <laughs> gravitating towards this lifestyle uh, I would say anyone that's working for either they, they're a freelancer, digital freelancer. They have a couple clients uh, that they're already working for online. So they have that, that safety net, you know, 
uh, guaranteed income. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm quite in that position yet, but I'm just finding ways to stay afloat. <laughs> I have a couple marketing clients and, uh, but yeah, basically anyone who's a freelancer or they work for a company that, that allows for full-time remote work. And a lot yeah. of times you can just ask your boss and then they'll be accepting to this because, you know, everyone's working from home or working remotely nowadays. Is it, now in your mind, is it, is it feasible or possible even to be a digital nomad, even in your own country? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can. I'm from the United States originally. And obviously there's, there's a lot of uh, beautiful places to visit around the U S and you can say, go to Colorado for a few weeks out of the year, or maybe a few months and then just work from there. Or, you know, there's, there's many places go up to Canada. Yeah. Mexico. Now you you Mexico take, you take video there. footage as you go. Um, yeah. And, and, and that ends up on your YouTube channel, which we're, which we're linked to afterwards. Excellent. What, what are you, what are you showing people on that YouTube channel? What what sort of things? Are, are there hints and tips in there as well about how to how to live this lifestyle, or is it is it just showing people around? <laughs> yeah, so I, I would like to start making more videos that are more informative about some of these things, like top countries for digital nomads and these things. But right now, I'm really just focusing on the travel vlog. So I'm showing people that I'm already living, I'm already doing this. Um, yeah. here in thailand so kind of just inspiring them to to visit thailand at the time being currently and i would like to obviously continue traveling soon but i That's have a wonderful. girlfriend here and she's one of the reasons i'm, I'm staying uh yeah well yeah, that, that, that makes quiet. sense mm -hmm. that makes mm -hmm. sense so i mean you it, you there's a video that you did the other day from where you are now yellow and you you showed us around in there i mean you're you're in a a booth at the moment yeah so it yeah, is. That's, that's a like private booth but just just so um people can visualize in their head uh and, and then they can go and watch the video to get a better idea outside of that booth there's quite a big space yeah i could actually show you around but i'd have to carry my laptop around yeah no, no, it's, it's fine <laughs> <laughs> they can watch the, the uh full tour video on my youtube channel though yeah but there's different types of spaces within that space in order to do, you know, um, if you wanted to chat a bit more or if you yep. wanted to sit, sit quietly. Yeah, so, so right, right outside this booth, which is a soundproof booth for that people use for conference calls and interviews. Uh, they also have a large space with a bunch of tables set up and even like a little spot where you can sit, uh, on some cushions. So yeah, it's a big space. They also have a coffee shop and then upstairs you can get a hot desk, which is like a reserved spot. It's reserved only for you. So that's if yeah. you have a, a business and you're coming here every day. Uh, but that's, that's a higher tiered membership. I mean, if, if people were beginning to think about this sounds like an idea I've, I've mm -hmm. actually been, I've actually spent the last, uh, 18 months or whatever sat at home looking at the same wall uh mm -hmm, doing mm -hmm. my work or whatever or or I'm, I'm just fed up of sitting in that same office space every every day and i know i can be more productive if i can if i can you know move around a bit um are there a couple of pieces of advice that you would give people just to to start out in this what are, are there people or, or yeah. any particular websites that they need to go and look at in the first place i would recommend checking out nomad list so this is a website that offers a, you know a curated list of the top digital nomad hotspots around the world um so that's that's changing all the time and yeah. it's it's based on different types of criteria like cost of living quality of life um many different things so if you're if you're looking to go to let's say Mexico, for example, just to go on vacation. Maybe you don't even want to be working while, while traveling and just take a vacation for a while uh, to see something new, then that, that would be probably the best, one of the best resources out there. Yeah. I mean, is, isn't that, is that not kind of part and parcel of the digital nomad lifestyle as well? Is that perhaps these days, 
life and work blend anyway. Yeah, sure. Yeah. They're kind of two sides of the same coin, but I would say that uh, you need that you need that work life balance as well. Do do you? Do you do yeah, you need work life balance or do you need balance? Because <laughs> I because I'm yeah. I'm, 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 I'm on the table about that because um mm -hmm. you know at the end of the day I like to try and find work that's not work <laughs> as well. If, if you love what you're doing, then it's not work, right? It's just part of, exactly. part of your daily life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and more, therefore, more yeah, I think it, I think it's important to prioritize and make time for the things that are important in your life. Um, and therefore, you know, you shouldn't necessarily have your head in a phone or a, or a, a, a laptop all day every day mm -hmm. but sometimes it's better just to leave your phone at home so you can reduce distraction so yeah if you're going to dinner and you don't want to be just leave it at home yeah no so absolutely mm -hmm. but then but then at the same time it's one of the beauties of being able to, to you know being in a more beautiful place and 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 you know moving from place to place that, you know, potentially you could just your, the structure of your day could vary a bit more. So you could actually uh -huh. just get up in the morning, maybe go for a walk. Yeah. You know, sure. go somewhere else and then laptop comes out, you know, catch up on some emails, you know, move on to another place, sit down, get a mm -hmm. coffee, do a little bit more work, you know. Sure. Yeah. It's all about prioritizing things so that you have, I, for me, I don't really have a daily schedule. It's something that I stick to every single day. I kind of just do. I'm pretty creative, so I like to uh, make it more unstructured. Yeah. But this is an example. Like when I'm going to visit some, you know, beautiful place up here in the mountains of Chiang Mai, I find it kind of difficult to separate work from just enjoying the moment. So let's say I'm going to go see some place, like a, go to a Buddhist temple. And I just want to enjoy the moment, right? Instead of always recording or thinking about, yeah. oh, yeah, now yeah. I should be making a travel vlog. Uh, it would be better just to be in the moment, right? Yeah, I understand that. Important. Do you, mm -hmm. do you think though? At the same time, that's that that same pressure is there for most people these days, regardless of where yeah. they are. Maybe you're just oh, in yeah. a, a nicer nicer place to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But but you know. I think it's the same for a lot of people anyway, regardless of whether they're living that lifestyle is that, you know, mm -hmm. they get up in the morning, you know, something happens in the home. Oh, that's interesting. I better, I better capture that. I better put that on social media. I better, you know, I can use that in some way in order to, you know, um, facilitate mm -hmm. part of my business or, or whatever. So I don't know yeah. that it's necessarily um, something that's unique to, Oh yeah, uh, definitely not. traveling. But you, you, you yeah. obviously get to see some amazing, amazing, amazing things. So yeah, I guess, as I say, you're, you're, yeah. yeah. So you're torn mm -hmm. between having that just for yourself, but also going, yeah. But I know people would love to see that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, just recently I did a. It was sort of a collaborative YouTube video where I teamed up with uh, Perfect Homes. They're a real estate company here in Chiang Mai. And I just took them around for a few condo tours. So I'm showing them around a the condo. And then, uh, so that was kind of more of a collaborative effort, which I like to start yeah. doing more of. Yeah. I was going to say, actually, that's quite fun as well, isn't it? Doing, mm -hmm. being collaborative like that. Yeah, We're nice collaborating thing also, now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And the same thing here is that you're helping me promote my business and then I can help you promote yours in return. So it's yeah. a mutual exchange. Yeah, and I, I think, I think that's again that's kind of part of the digital nomad lifestyle. Mm -hmm. In a way, is 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 finding ways of collaborating and you know and hustling as well as you as you go, in order to you know make make some money to to continue the travel. Definitely, and yeah. you know I love to, love to continue traveling. I've never been to Europe. You can believe Have you that. not? So, no, I've never been to Europe. So yeah. that's that's at the top of my list. I'd love to see Germany, uh, maybe go to Portugal for a while. 
uh, there's a guy there. He's starting a digital nomad village in the Madeira Islands. Wow. And he's been featured in, you know, all the Forbes, Inc., uh, you know, all the major publications. So, yeah, yeah it would be, that's kind of like the spotlight for the digital nomad. So, well, I, I think one of the, I think one of the great things is that that's, that's happening now and it's it started before the pandemic but the pandemic has pushed mm -hmm. it on has accelerated it is that you know that there, there is even here in england there's going to be a growth of co-working spaces and collaborative working spaces that that's mm -hmm. going to pop up um because businesses have realized that you know having huge real estate having these massive offices you know necess you know getting everybody to one place and the big commute every day is not necessarily the right thing to do um watched a a program earlier this week with kate humble who does who does sort of a, a program about people moving to the country to get a better life you know mm. somebody yeah so somebody that was you know working in london but her job was digital, et cetera, moved, moved out to the country just fairly near here, actually. Um, oh, yeah. A lot less stress. Yeah. You're not in the city, you're out in the country with nature, and it just it seems a lot less stressful. So I, I think more of it will happen. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just think I think more of it will happen. And, you know, uh, but that's that was one of the interesting things that came up in that program was the – on the one hand, she wanted to move out to somewhere as a base that uh -huh. was quieter. But then, you know, there's there's times, etc., when you're working where you want to be surrounded by other people. So, you Definitely. know, it's quite nice if you can find a quiet base to live. But maybe that's where the co-working spaces work uh -huh. out, you know. So you could have yeah. your little office at home. But then, you know, sign up for a co-working space where you go. And there's there's a mill of people. That's that's one of the nice things about Chiang Mai is it's also a university town. Right. So it, I'm living very close to the university. There's students there. It's still there's still a certain degree of freedom here um, compared to Bangkok, which is just completely locked down. That's yeah. why I chose Chiang Mai. And I was also living, I was living in Koh Samui, which is a beautiful island in, in southern Thailand for about five months. I also have a video, some videos from there on my YouTube channel, if you want to check it out. Right, and the nice, thing will. About, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the nice thing about Samui is it's, it's very quiet now. There's not too many, uh, there are some foreign, foreigner expats there, but almost no international travelers are coming to the island. So the beaches are just pristine very quiet, peaceful, but at the same time, it does get a little bit lonely yeah. after a while. You're like, oh, well, I have this whole beach to myself. It's like a private island, <laughs> but where are the people? Yeah. It's like, yeah, but they don't have any co-working spaces in Samoa. It's, I have some friends who are working on that, um, but we definitely need something there. Do you, do you think there's room for investors to, to come in and, and in other areas and actually create more co-working spaces then? yeah most definitely there's actually one uh it's called social tell which is still sort of under construction but they have about five million dollars invested into that and i think they're kind of just biding their time waiting for the tourists to start coming back yeah and then yeah and there's also copenhagen which is right next door and kotao so there's three islands in the same area and Copenhagen is has a lot more options for co-working over there. So it's only like 45 minutes to get there on a boat. Yeah. I mean, that, does it does it annoy you at all? Because it, it annoys me slightly when if people use the term remote work, but actually mm -hmm. all they mean is they they <laughs> they work from home and then go into the office twice. It does. A week. That does kind of annoy me actually. It's it's not the same. You know, if you're if you're just working from home, that's great, but you're not really seeing anything. You're just stuck at home all the time. It's kind of boring. Yeah. Uh, whereas, you know, if you're working remotely, you can, there's, they're same, same, but different, but there is a slight distinction there. 
Yeah, like, I, when I think of remote work, I think of working from a foreign country, yeah. somewhere other than your home. Yeah, I, I'd, home. I'd, I'd say I'd, I'd say that bit. I'd say somewhere other than your home. Mm-hmm. In, in, in a way, I'd, I'd certainly, as I said earlier, I'm not sure that it's necessarily has to be another country, but at least you know, go out and find other places to to do yeah. bits of work. You know, don't just stay um, stay in your bubble. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly that. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, um, and that's why I hope, as I say, that I, I think what we're going to be seeing is is more infrastructure put out there in order to enable that as well. Mm-hmm. And it's got to be, to be honest, it's got to be the way forward for people as well. Is Absolutely. I think for especially for people's mental health and well being um you know to be able to you know get out see a little bit more and 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 you know the other thing as well is that there's a lot of people that want to be able to travel correct yeah, there's yeah. a lot of people that just want to travel and see a bit of the world well now it, it's not necessarily a case of you bring this people these people into the business and you're kind of scared that in a couple of years time they're going to just whiz off and travel around the world and that's it you know Uh businesses need to make more more plans for enabling remote working would you say definitely and that's already that's already starting to happen and i think some companies are are offering pay raises actually if you're working remotely so they're trying to incentivize it and get more and more people out of the office and a lot of people are quitting now there's a mass uh, like exodus of people that are saying oh no we don't we're not going to come back to the office we'd yeah. much rather work from home yeah and and uh, so it's already happening and this pandemic is just expediting things it's a good point odessa you you still need collaborative working for interaction and being amongst people so you do definitely, definitely. but that doesn't necessarily mean that your team have to be <laughs> <laughs> all in one place i don't think you know i think that no, i have, think that's kind of been proved via technology zoom um, have so many people are using zoom now or skype or what we're using now uh yeah it's, but it is important to have that in-person interaction i think yeah that's a, that's a key element and that's where these co-working spaces are really 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 vital just to get to meet other other people i mean that's the funny thing isn't it if people are sat there working at home they possibly have no interaction whatsoever with anybody Uh else in the world yeah Um, i work from home and it's just a studio apartment it's not a lot of space but uh my girlfriend's usually there so sometimes i want to just go somewhere else um, yeah to get away for a while give her some space and then so i come to this co-working space yeah this is an interesting question from Odessa as well. Mm-hmm. Could this uh, could this start the end of the office nine to five Monday to Friday? I think there's a lot of people asking those questions at the moment on LinkedIn. Um, oh yeah, definitely. Do do you know would would you prefer a, a four day working week? Um, my 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 view on that is, and I don't know about you, but is it about a four day working week or is it? Again, it's going back to my life balance thing. Is it just uh-huh. about splitting up your week and just having times when you're doing this and times when you're doing that and, and actually making it a little bit more fluid? Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that's because now, you know, research shows that uh, people who are working from home are a lot more productive, but that's because they're just stuck at home and they can't, they're always thinking about work, right? They don't have the office time and the home time it's all one um yeah so yeah it's really important to set a schedule and maybe just set an alarm or something that says okay i want to stop working in yeah. an hour and then go for a walk and just se- separate the two yeah yeah no absolutely and i don't know whether it, as i say whether it's necessarily about going down to a four day working week because uh, i mean if you do that but you're, you're pressured still- pressured in that four days you know mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you probably need that extra day because you're, you're going to have a nervous breakdown i think i think it's a, i think it's about i just think it's about you know getting a getting a better pace and a better uh-huh. uh, um better flow to 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 the workload um 
you know and that's where we do need to learn some lessons in this and from the pandemic in terms of sort of time management and and business management because yeah it's no good just having people go zoom meeting zoom meeting zoom meeting zoom meeting zoom meeting zoom meeting all day long not letting them have any time to do any work then they're mm. catching up in the evenings or whatever that switched on all the time bit isn't great for people i mean the the benefit of i think some of the benefit that we're seeing from remote workers is they're finding this better pace of life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how to spread that work out during the day so it doesn't mean yeah. to say you don't work hard but it, it's just not necessarily so intense i would recommend reading the four hour work week which i have right here ah. this one is in thai it's in Thai, so I can't under I can't read this. It's, I don't read Thai. Um, <laughs> but you have a copy yeah. that you have read. <laughs> Other copies are I have available. A copy. Yeah. And what, what what's what's the premise of that? Yeah, this is a, it's a great book. It's uh, essentially just everything that you don't want to do, outsource it to another, say the Philippines or somewhere, and and just realize that you don't have to do everything yourself, and you should set that. I actually never finished the book, to be honest. I read, I think I read about half of it. Yeah, you got the gist. Boring, a little bit boring. <laughs> I'd rather <laughs> just get the cl the Cliff Notes version. I love the honesty <laughs> of that. Yeah, but, yeah, no, that's great. But it's a Mike, classic. It's, many people want. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today. What we're going to do is, um, for anyone that wants to see a little bit more of Yellow the co-working space that Mike is currently inhabiting um, or a little bit more of Thailand to get, get an idea. Um, then we will do the link to Mike's YouTube channel to, to this video content so that you can go and see that. Um, and I guess that this video content may end up on, on Mike's um, channel as well anyway. So I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've been watching it folks. Um, and I guess Mike, if, 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 if people want help and advice, they, they can always pay you for that <laughs> in terms of getting started Absolutely. As, as, a, yeah, as a digital I'm nomad. always looking, looking for new clients. Always looking for new clients. I have a remote uh, business consulting, remote consulting business called Be Remote Consulting. And that's just, it's just beremote.org. So you can check that out. I also help people with um, uh, marketing on LinkedIn to find clients. I use a uh, marketing automation. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to reach out to me as well. But there I'm working on many, many different projects. I'd be happy to chat. Cool. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. Sorry about the gremlins and getting getting started with this today, but uh, that's that's no technology for you. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thanks for joining yeah, yeah, me, yeah. Mike. Bye for now. Can't live with it. Can't live without it. <laughs>